the beauty of the prayer itself is that you don't need to be you Len for it to work right it's a, it's a powerful I, I've used it myself <clears throat> in my life so do you feel that this prayer will work for any even a guy who says I don't really believe this and he starts trying the prayer you think the the, the prayer has a life of its own an energy yes. of its own Okay. Yeah. And I explored that more in the second book, the, the one I call At Zero, because when I wrote the second book, I had been practicing Ho'oponopono for a decade, for 10 years. And during that time, I had heard from everybody. I had heard from the skeptics. I had heard from the critics. I had heard from the, the cult-like fans who were saying, this works for anything you can name. And they were sending in stories, some of which I put in all the books, of people having interpersonal relationships healed, uh, healing problems taken care of. Uh, I've mentioned animals several times, people who were in love with their pets and their pets were ill. They would do Ho'oponopono for their perceptions of the need for healing and the pets would get better. Uh, financial concerns, everything. I have had people who were just diehard skeptics say, all right, I'll try it. It's just saying four stupid lines, I mean, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. What's the big deal? And then they would come back and say, I don't know how it works or why it works. But what I did it on was resolved magically, unexplainably, you know, just almost like magic. And I think that the four phrases are actually more than four phrases. I think that the phrases are a kind of combination lock to open up our heart and allow more spirituality to come in. And if you don't mind, I'll explain the four phrases a, a wee bit more so that people can understand what's going on. When we say, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. The first thing to note is you can say it in any order. I just kind of say it that way out of habit, but you can mix it up, you can do whatever you want, but I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. So what are we saying when we actually say these phrases? Basically, when we say something like, I'm sorry, the further meaning is, I'm sorry for whatever part of me that may have been unconscious or any part of my ancestors who may have contributed to this perception of a problem. I'm sorry for being blind to it. Please forgive me for not being aware. Please forgive my ancestors for living the life of unconsciousness. And I'll stop right there because neither one of these are negative statements. Neither one of these are statements for self-punishment. And I'm specifically pointing that out because I've done this enough to know that a lot of people will say, well, I don't wanna say I'm sorry, or I don't wanna say, please forgive me because I didn't do anything wrong. And I'll have to point out, we're talking about you being unconscious to what you have done. And if you're unconscious to it, how do you know what you were thinking or what you were doing or what your ancestors might have been thinking or doing? Because you're unconscious to it. One of the examples I would give is, imagine you go to a grocery store and it's busy and you got your cart and you're looking for your bread and whatever else, and you bump into somebody. Don't you naturally just go, oh, I'm sorry. Don't you naturally turn and apologize to the person? Mm -hmm. You're not apologizing because you did anything wrong. You're not apologizing because you need to be punished. You're not apologizing because you are weak or wrong in some way, shape, or form. You're apologizing because you were unconscious in that moment. That's the purity of I'm sorry and please forgive me. So when you're saying it, we're asking the divine to realize, well, we've been sleepwalking through life and all of us do it, all of us. There is... There's so much I can tell you about Ho'oponopono and all the other things I've learned over the 15, 16 years I've been doing it at this point that uh, I wish I had more time. But let's stay on the four phrases. So I love you and I'm sorry, please forgive me uh, and thank you. When you say thank you, you're basically saying thank you for correcting this problem. Thank you for helping me rectify it. Thank you for bringing me to a place of neutrality, a place of peace, a place of serenity, a place where the problem and the perception have been removed. When you say, I love you, I love you for my life. I love you for this process. I love you for Ho'oponopono. I love you for this clearing. I love you for this healing. You can go on forever with all the different aspects of it. 
So when we kind of mumble, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, we're actually giving a shorthand prayer for something that is impacted with lots more meaning and energy. And at this point, because the phrases have been used for so long, that we that were used long before I ever wrote my book, Zero Limits, because this has been a cultural thing in Hawaii for centuries. There's two kinds of ho'oponopono, and again, we can talk about that if you want and if there's time. But when we in this present moment feel that there's a problem or an issue in our lives, we realize it's in us, we realize it's perception-based, we realize four simple phrases, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, can get us out of jail. And then we can say them inside as if having a conversation and making a request to the great something, the great mystery, God, the divine nature. And it's that process that actually helps unravel everything, even for the skeptics, the critics, and the diehard fans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joe, you, um, you've written the three books about this subject, Zero Limits, At Zero, and The Fifth Phrase. Now, the fifth phrase is the most recent one. It's like a trilogy of books. And the fifth phrase is you feel there's another phrase that gives even more power to this prayer. Yes. Yes. Okay. So everybody wants to know the fifth phrase right now, including <laughs> myself. But I leave that ball in your core to reveal as much as you want to about that. Um, tell us a bit about the fifth phrase. Well, it's first it's important to realize that the fifth phrase required an entire book to explain. So one of my most recent books is called The Fifth Phrase, and it's entirely about the fifth phrase. So my explaining it, which I'll do, I, I don't mind sharing with people you've gathered here, it will be maybe hard to absorb and hard to understand because saying it without the book to explain everything might not fully reveal its power. Now, having said that as my intro and my disclaimer, <laughs> I will say that several years ago, I was hosting an advanced Ho'oponopono event. And this is where people who had already been practicing Ho'oponopono for a long time, had already read my first two books, they flew in from all over the world, including from Ireland. And they came to a place in Texas where we had a retreat. And I and a bunch of other speakers were going to talk about different aspects of Ho'oponopono. The night before I was to speak, I'm scheduled to be the first speaker in the morning. The night before I had an awakening, a download, an inspiration, an aha moment, where what I've now called the fifth phrase descended upon me. I didn't plan on it. I didn't go looking for it. I didn't think about it. I didn't request it. It appeared. And one of the things I want to footnote for all those here, especially if you're new to Ho'oponopono, as you practice Ho'oponopono, you keep clearing yourself of limiting beliefs. And the more you clear yourself, the more you become available for inspiration from the great something. So I've been doing this. And so at two, three in the morning, whatever it was, and this fifth phrase came to me. It came because I had created an opening to receive it and myself. And I decided on stage the next morning, I'm revealing it to the people there. And it took me an hour and a half to explain it. And I, I don't have that much time here. One woman who was in the audience, who has been a diehard fan of my work, who'd been practicing Ho'oponopono, she came up after my presentation and said, Dr. Joe, that fifth phrase is so powerful that it eliminates the need for the first four. And I actually use that quote in the book, the fifth phrase. All right, so what is the fifth phrase? The fifth phrase is gonna sound like bad English or bad Irish, depending on how we translate it here. <laughs> the fifth phrase is, I forgives myself. 
I forgives myself. Now, if I said, I forgive myself, you'd all go, oh yeah, that makes sense. But you wouldn't stop and think about it. When I say I forgives, plural, myself, now you're wondering, why does he say it that particular way? So let's dissect it. The I, I is not referring to you as an I. It's not referring to the I of Joe. The I is referring to the I of divinity. When Dr. Hulen would write to me, we'd exchange emails and so forth when we weren't together, he would end it by saying, peace of I. Peace of I, and the I would be the letter I, not an I, E-Y-E, but the letter I. What does he mean? It's the peace of divinity. He was wishing the peace of all that is to me. So when I say I forgives myself, the I is referring to divinity. It's referring to your concept of God. It's referring to your concept of the higher power. It's not you. It is not the I that it, I would refer to myself like I did something. That's not the I. I'm talking about the divine. That's the I. So it's the supernatural part. For yeah, it's give, like the I am, the I am, yeah. The I am, yes. Yeah, yeah. The uh, forgives is referring to divinity is forgiving you. You are not forgiving you. Divinity has already forgiven you. I forgives. Divinity forgives. What is divinity forgiving? Myself is not one word. It's two words. And the self is a small s, not a capital S. So divinity is forgiving your little self. Divinity is forgiving your subconscious programming. In Ho'oponopono, they use the word data. And Dr. Hulan always used the word data. We are, we are eliminating data, erasing data, deleting data. The data in our terms would probably be limiting beliefs, unconscious assumptions, paradigms of scarcity, paradigms of separation, all of those, that all comes together to be called data. So I forgives myself means the divine forgives your data. Another way to look at this is that the divine's already forgiven. Dr. Hulen once went for a walk, and when he came back, he was crying. He had tears coming down his eyes. And when we asked what was going on, he said, the divine only wants you to know one thing. The divine wants you to know that you are loved. You are loved. You are loved. All of the judgments, all of the resentments, all of the sense of guilt, all of the sense of justice, it's coming from our little self, what Freud would have called ego. So I forgives myself is the fifth phrase, which loosely with the translation where we got to work with in the time we have, means the divine forgives your data. The divine forgives your subconscious self. The divine forgives your limiting beliefs. And so the one person would come up and said, with that one phrase, you don't need the other four. I feel that do what you're inspired to do. Use all five phrases. Use four. Use one of them. I've had people over the years say, I don't like saying I'm sorry or please forgive me. And I asked Dr. Lin about it. And he says, they don't have to say it. <laughs> Just say the one you want to say. Mm -hmm. And I've gone on presentations where I said, you know, if you walked around all day and only said thank you, your life would transform. Or if you walked around all day and only said, I love you inside yourself, not to other people, though well, that might be cool. But if you walked around inside yourself saying, I love you. that's going on in your head, your vibe would change, your spirits would change, your mind would change, your, your essence would change, and what you would attract in your life would change. He said, this is the power of these phrases. I'm in favor as a student of Ho'oponopono and practitioner of saying all of them. 
but I have no problem in having the cafeteria approach where you just walk by and pick the one you want that day. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of a long answer to. Yeah. No, thanks for sharing that with us. That's uh, it's really interesting. The fifth phrase. I like it. I like it. 